Welcome to Christ Church in Alexandria, Virginia. Travel across America with me. Does that say 1773? That's before 1776. And we all know what happened in 1776. And who were some of the movers and shakers? Well, George Washington, of course. And this is his church. There is so much to see in Alexandria. On the Potomac River, across from Washington, D.C., our first stop in town was the Lee Fendel House Museum. I will take you there but not now. We are headed to Christ Church a few blocks away on the corner of North Washington and Cameron Streets. There is a self-guided walking tour with 20 stops. You won't want to miss any of them. We went to the Lee Fendel House, Christ Church, the Visitor Center, Gadsby's Tavern Museum, and the restaurant and the replica of Washington's townhouse. But today, I want to tell you a little about Christ Church. And at the end of this video, you will want to wait to hear George Washington's prayer for his country. He wrote this from his headquarters as Commander-in-Chief at Newburgh, New York, on June 8, 1783. But you'll have to wait. But now, let me take you to the church. The guided tours are free, and Harley was our host. He is one of many volunteers that work at the church to share all the great information about this historical place. It is a lovely 1773 church where local congregants have gathered for centuries, and the church is still holding services. Visitors can sit in the pew that George Washington purchased, and we did, and you can see where Robert E. Lee was confirmed, and you can see his pew also. There is a 200-year-old graveyard that you can stroll through and see many tombstones and memorial markers. The streets of Alexandria hold stunning architecture, and this is a great town to tour on foot or on bike, or of course there is the free trolley. On our way between the Lee Findle House and the church, we found this historic street. In the 1790s, many Alexandria streets were paved with cobblestones. According to legend, Hessian soldiers provided the labor to cobble Princess Street. These cobbles remained essentially untouched until 1979, when the street was restored using the original cobbles. No truck traffic, but you can drive your car on this historic street. Here here we are at North Washington and Cameron Street, the location of the church. Welcome, history buffs, travelers, and seekers of information, to a church where George Washington worshipped. Christ Church was built more than 235 years ago to be a parish church to meet the spiritual needs of its parishioners and the community, a tradition that continues today. Originally built in a quiet, wooded location, Christ Church now has more than 2,400 members and is in the heart of the city of Alexandria. I think they're actually having a 250-year history. That's common to find different numbers when doing research. Its official name, Christ Church Episcopal, Alexandria, Virginia. It is open for guided tours during the following hours. No reservations required for small groups. The block out front was part of the Adopt-A-Block program, and this one was sponsored by the R.E. Lee Camp. Sons of Confederate Veterans. Christ Church, 1773, Historic Alexandria Foundation, Early Building Surveys. You'll find this medallion on almost every building in the city. Don't forget to subscribe. This is the Eastern Gate. It was constructed in 1830 and restored in 2004. Welcome to this holy ground. The Western Gate has this marker. To the glory of God and in memory of Walter Merritt Pickard, Colonel, U.S. Air Force. This gate was restored in 2002. The church honors their past and gives a full detail of the tombstone inscriptions. The graveyard has not always been maintained as lovely as it is today. In its early years, livestock may have been allowed to graze there, accomplishing the dual function of trimming and fertilizing. Oh, that's funny. As its use declined in the 20th century, the graveyard was allowed to grow over with natural vegetation. In the mid-1970s, a committee of parishioners was formed for the upkeep of the graveyard. It has since been maintained in a manner that honors the memories of those buried there. The church provides a list of all the inscriptions. As you can see, some of the stones are very difficult to read. We found the grave of George Mason's son. After our visit to Alexandria, we did go to George Mason's plantation called Gunston Hall, the home of American rights. And of course, I'll be taking you to Gunston Hall in a future video. Christ Church has been designated a registered National Historic 
landmark. Welcome to Christ Church. Please come in for a tour to rest or to pray in memory of the honorary pallbearers of General George Washington, General, fellow townsmen, brother masons, trusted friends, comrades in the cause of American independence. Colonel Sims, Colonel Ramsey, Colonel Payne, Colonel Gilpin, Colonel Marsteller. I wonder if we're going to see anything about Colonel Philip Marsteller again in this video. And Colonel Little. In memory also of the lieutenants Moss, Hoof, Turner, Wise, of the 106th Regiment of the Virginia Militia who bore his body to the tomb December 18, 1799. And we have been to Mount Vernon and to George Washington's tomb. And here is the gorgeous interior of the church. George Washington worshipped here for a quarter century, beginning when the church opened in 1773. And here's his pew. They say he purchased the pew. And this is Harley, our great tour guide and interpreter. He was a lot of fun. He attends church there. He used to live in Wyoming. We really enjoyed our time with Harley. Thank you to all of the volunteers that work in the city and at this church. It is certainly very well maintained. And speaking of maintained, this sign read, It costs more than $50,000 a year to keep Christ Church open during the week for visitors. The church does not receive federal or state funding for preserving this sanctuary that dates from 1773, maintaining its other buildings and grounds and keeping them open to visitors. Parishioners are committed to those tasks and welcome donations to support their efforts. Do not forget to subscribe. I hope you're enjoying all the videos as we travel together across America. Back to the church, visitors welcomed from around the world. On the first day of the new year of 1942, shortly after World War II began, for the U.S., President Franklin Roosevelt and First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt escorted British Prime Minister Winston Churchill to Christ Church. And this is one of the rare photos that you will see of Roosevelt, and you will see that he is standing up using a cane. I think he might be receiving some help from those in attendance around him. And here are markers for the National Day of Prayer, January 1st, 1942. Winston Churchill, Franklin D. Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt. I think this is really fascinating. I hope you find this fascinating. It would be fun to attend a service here, don't you think? I have a fun fact to share with you. If you attend a service there and you get there early enough, you can sit in the section that was owned by George Washington. Wouldn't that be awesome? And then here's the pew that's marked Robert E. Lee. It's just across from George Washington's pew. It's not as big. It's just one of the straight, long, regular pews where George had a whole big suite section. Each pew has a doorway also. The pipe organ was replaced in 2022-2023. I just couldn't get over how beautiful and well-maintained this church interior was. Simply beautiful. In recent decades, other U.S. presidents have come to show their respect, including President and Mrs. Reagan, President and Mrs. Carter, President Johnson, President and Mrs. Eisenhower, President and Mrs. Bush, and President and Mrs. Hoover. Obviously, that wasn't in chronological order. Back outside, and we looked at a few more memorial stones. And I'm always attracted to these sundials. And here, this is a memorial to Philip Marsteller, 1741 to 1803. He's the guy that was one of George Washington's pallbearers. Remember that? Lieutenant Colonel, USA, Revolutionary War, 1st Battalion, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, Associators, 1777, Assistant Deputy Quartermaster General, Member of the Pennsylvania Constitutional Convention, July 1776. The original stone was removed during the war between the states. Well, that's crazy. I wonder what they did with it. Anyway. This is honoring Philip Marsteller, quite a gentleman patriot of the United States. One more monument. This one is for some Confederate soldiers. The inscription reads, How sleep the brave who sink to rest, by all their country's wishes blessed. Beneath this mound lie the remains of 34 Confederate soldiers, which were disinterred from the Alexandria Soldier Cemetery, a federal cemetery, and reinterred in this ground on the 27th day of December, 1878, under the auspices of the Southern Memorial Association of Alexandria, Virginia. These men were prisoners of war who died in the federal hospitals in 
this city. Oh, well, that's all kind of sad, isn't it? As we are wrapping up our time with Harley, he had mentioned that we needed to go to see George Washington's townhome and go eat peanut soup. And I want to encourage you to go watch the video on Gadsby's Tavern, Museum, and Restaurant and find out about the peanut soup and see the short on George Washington's townhome. As we were leaving, we found this clock of sorts on the building across the street on Cameron Street. If you know anything about these kinds of clocks, please tell me more about them in the comments below. This was the second one of these things we had seen in one month. I'm not sure they work, so I'm looking forward to your comments. A few more things before we get to George Washington's prayer. Just north of the church, I found this sign the site of the first synagogue of Bethel Hebrew Congregation. On this site stood Bethel Hebrew Congregation Synagogue, the first structure built as a Jewish house of worship in the Washington metropolitan area. Founded in 1859, Bethel, the first Reformed Jewish congregation in the Washington area, is Northern Virginia's oldest Jewish congregation. Bethel built the synagogue here in 1871 and worshipped in it until 1954. A new synagogue on Seminary Road, Alexandria, was dedicated in 1957. Now, to George Washington's prayer. Have you subscribed yet? If not, could you please subscribe? And if you have, thank you. George Washington's Prayer for His Country Adapted from Washington's Circular to the States Written from his headquarters as Commander-in-Chief at Newburgh, New York On June 8, 1783 You know what's crazy? We just spent the night at a campground near Newburgh, New York This circular was directed to the governors and states of the new nation His reference to them has been replaced by the words United States Otherwise, the words and spelling are those of George Washington. I now make it my earnest prayer that God would have the United States in his holy protection, that he would incline the hearts of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government, to entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another, for their fellow citizens of the United States at large, and particularly for their brethren who have served in the fields. And final, that he would most graciously be pleased to dispose us all, to do justice, to love mercy, and to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion, and without an humble imitation of whose example in these things, we can never hope to be a happy nation. Amen. George Washington, June 8, 1783. Flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Don't forget to watch the videos on Gatsby's Tavern and George Washington's Townhome.